Today I'm going to be baking the same sourdough bread with three different amounts of sourdough starter. What difference does it make when baking sourdough bread? Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to vary the amount of sourdough starter in the same recipe of a sourdough bread and we'll see what difference it makes. It was suggested to me by a viewer that the amount of sourdough starter, the so-called inoculation, would make a difference in the open crumb of sourdough bread. I'm not thinking that it will. My experience shows that the most important factors in open crumb are correct fermentation, flour choice, and gentle handling. But I'm always up for an experiment. What I think will be the standout differences are the fermentation time, the more starter, the faster the fermentation. I think the longer the fermentation, the more of a sour note to the bread. That means the lowest inoculation will give you the most sour bread. I'll do a taste test at the end of the video. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. My goal is to teach you how to get the most out of every ingredient and I'll show you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The bread itself is made with an 85% hydration dough. I will be using 80% bread flour and 20% rye flour. The three doughs will have 10%, 20% and 30% inoculation. That's baker's percentages. I will vary the fermentation time so that each bread gets the correct fermentation. So they will be shaped and put in the fridge at different times. Then I'll give them a long cold fermentation and bake them separately. If you want to support the channel, please consider buying some of my merch, tools or ingredients through the links in the description. If you do, I will get a commission, so be aware of that. Those were the words. This is the experiment. The formulas for all three breads are linked in the description. I'm not using a Laban today, so I'm going to go straight to the auto lease. I mix all the flour, all the water and the salt. Yes, I include the salt in the auto lease and even though it isn't technically an auto lease, I call it that. I leave the flour to hydrate for about an hour. Then I mix each dough. After the doughs are mixed, they rest for 30 minutes. After the dough has rested, I do the first set of stretch and folds.
then the second set of stretch and folds. And the third set of stretch and folds. When I finish the third set, I do a window pane test to see if the gluten is developed, and then I move each dough to a bulking container. Then I let the doughs ferment until they've grown about 50%. The 30% inoculation is finished first, so I pre-shape the dough. I let it rest for 20 minutes and then I do the final shape. Yeah, I, I know this could have been done uh, more masterfully. Then I put the banneton in a plastic bag and leave it on the counter until it passes the poke test. As you can see, fills in slow-ish and leaves a bit of an indentation. That means the fermentation is done. I put the dough back in the plastic bag and put it in the fridge. Then the 20% inoculation dough is ready, so I pre-shape it. I final shape it. and leave it to ferment until it passes the poke test. Same procedure with the 10% inoculation dough. As I had a very busy day the following day, I did a very long cold fermentation. So my doughs fermented for about 36 hours. Then I preheat my oven and start with the 30% inoculation bread. Score it. Not a great score. I think this dough might be cursed. <laughs> then I bake it and take it out of the oven. I follow the same procedure for baking that I usually do. So if you want to bake sourdough bread like this, go watch my video, Sourdough Bread for Beginners. It explains everything. I've linked it in the card above. Then I bake the 20% inoculation, take it out of the oven, and then the 10% inoculation. And I take that out of the oven. Then I let them cool for a couple of hours and then I cut into them. First the 10%. It's a bit flat. This may be over fermented. No, it looks great. Then the 20%. bit of irregularity, but that's still roughly the same type of crumb. Then the 30%. Again, 
the same type of crumb. After I cut them, I tasted each bread. Well, they sure taste good no matter how they look. Okay, so there's obviously no difference in the amount of open crumb in the three breads. While the 10% was a bit flatter, the crumb shows that the fermentation was good. Taste-wise, the 10% inoculation bread had the most tang. It was delicious. <laughs> to me, there was no discernible difference in taste between the 20% and 30% inoculation. The point of inoculation is to help you get the correct fermentation in different temperatures. If your kitchen is really cold, use a higher amount of sourdough starter to help fermentation along so you don't have to ferment all day. If your kitchen is really warm, use a lower amount of sourdough starter to help the fermentation go on longer so you can get that amazing taste. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.